Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. It sounds great, and we often say it so casually at this time of year. But tonight, as we worship God together, we recognize that for many people, Christmas may not be so merry. We acknowledge that the holiday season can be difficult for those who are grieving those who have difficult family relationships, those who struggle with addictions, illness, and depression, and those who feel the pain of poverty, hunger, and disease. We gather as a community to express and acknowledge these emotions, to encourage and support one another, and to affirm that it was into such a world as this that God's love took flesh in Jesus. Darkness, darkness, be my pillow. Take my head and let me sleep in the coolness of your shadow, in the silence of your deep. Darkness, darkness, hide my yearning for the things I cannot see. Keep my mind from constant turning to the things I cannot be. Darkness, darkness, be my blanket. Cover me with this endless night. Take away this pain of knowing. Fill this emptiness with light. Darkness, darkness, long and lonesome is the day that brings me here. I have felt the edge of sadness. I have known the depths of fear. Darkness, darkness, be my blanket. Cover me with the endless night. Take away this pain of knowing. Fill this emptiness with light. Fill this emptiness with light. Take your bulletin, if you would, and join with me in our call to worship. In the midst of this season, when we celebrate the hope of Christ coming, we come together to share the grief we may be feeling. In the midst of this season, when we celebrate the peace that Christ brings, we come together to acknowledge that we may also be experiencing pain. In the midst of this season, when we celebrate the joy of Christ coming, we come together to name our fears. In the midst of this season, when we celebrate the love that Christ brings, we come together to upheld in our struggles. The light shines in the darkness. Let us worship God, the one who abides with us in the midst of all the celebration, sorrow of this season. Let's bow together in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you tonight to acknowledge the blue feelings we are having at this Christmas time. Sometimes we even feel guilty when we have these feelings. God, the world tells us it is supposed to be a time of joy and celebration, and yet it can be some of the darkest times for us. God, we offer up to you all those things we are feeling and all the situations that worry us and ask that you heal our pains, and God, remove the loneliness. Help us to recognize the pressures of the season that drag us into the darkness, and help us to turn them over to you. Amen. Let's join together now as we watch our music video, While I Wait. Deep within my heart, 
In the midst of all that we share, acknowledge, and name, God is with us. In our times of grief, through the fears we experience, feeling our pain and struggling beside us in the darkest valleys of our life, 
we light this candle to remember that God has come and is coming into the world. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and the ransom captive Israel, that mourns in lonely exile here, until the Son of God appears. Shall 
come again with us to dwell. The empty chair represents those who won't be home for Christmas. Perhaps a relationship has ended. Perhaps the people we love will be far away. Perhaps sickness or death has changed how things used to be. We light this first candle to remember those whom we have loved and lost. We pause to remember their names their faces, their voices, the memories that we hold in our hearts. Repeat, may God's eternal love surround them. The empty chair also represents the pain and sadness that can come from other events that enter our lives uninvited and unwanted, leaving us reeling in pain and shock, unable to shape the feeling that it wasn't supposed to be like that. So we light this second candle to represent other losses that we face, the loss of health, of independence, of freedom, the loss of confidence or security, plans that did not work out, or hopes that ended in despair. Refresh us, restore us, and be us of power, and lead us into the future. We light this third candle to represent our courage, the courage to face our sadness, to share our feelings with others, our doubts and fears, our anger, frustration, or depression, and to dare to hope in the depths of our pain. Let us remember that even after night has fallen, the dawn of a new day will follow. We light this first, fourth candle to remember those who have supported us in our pain. We pause to remember the prayers, the words of comfort and support, the acts of kindness from family and friends, and those who stood with us in our time of need. Let us remember the one who shows us the way, who brings truth, and who bears the light for us all. We're going to take time now to light our own candles. We invite you to come forward and light a candle from the basket onto the candle, and then place the candle in the votive here up front as a symbol of our laying before God tonight, our grief, our pain, our anger, struggles, and all that is us.
The scripture I'd like to share for us tonight comes from the first letter of Peter, and I'll be reading the fifth chapter, verses 6 through 11. Let us hear God's word as it comes to us tonight. Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, so that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your anxiety on him, because he cares for you. Discipline yourselves, keep alert. Like a roaring lion, your adversary, the devil, prowls around looking for someone to devour. Resist him. Steadfast in your faith, for you know that your brothers and sisters in all the world are undergoing the same kind of suffering. And after you have suffered for a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, support, strengthen, and establish you. To him be the power forever and ever. Amen. Our lives are filled with doors. Think about it. How many doors have you opened or walked through today? There are doors in our homes and in our workplaces, public places, business places, and even here at church. Now, some doors are always open but some are closed and require you to pull a handle or a knob. Sometimes we know what's on the other side of the door. While for some doors, when you open it for the very first time, what is on the other side is still a mystery to you. But regardless, we spend a lot of time in life walking through doors. Every morning when we wake, we stand at a new door of that day. None of us know what that day will bring for us in our lives. As the day unfolds, how it will unfold is a mystery. Now, we may have our plans and schedules for the day, but you know and I know our plans do not always work out the way that we think and hope. And even when we know what is waiting on that other side of the door, knowing that sometimes can lead to anxiety and fear and uncertainty. Indeed, we tend to worry about what we do know as well as what we don't know. Well, the Bible says a lot about worry and anxiety. Jesus spoke about not worrying about tomorrow Paul, the apostle, told us not to have anxiety about anything. And Peter, in our scripture, calls for us to cast our cares upon the Lord. Each scripture encourages us to open the doors of our faith, trusting that the God on this side of the door is the same God on the other side of the door. And so as Peter confesses, we can cast our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. Howard Ward Beecher was an American Congregationalist clergyman, social reformer, speaker, known for his support of the abolition of slavery. Beecher once wrote, every tomorrow has two handles. We can take hold of it with the handle of anxiety or with the handle of faith. With every door and in every experience in our lives, we can open it in anxiety or we can open it in faith. But the choice is always ours. So before we take the handle of the next door in our lives, let us take Peter's admonition to heart. Before we open the door, cast all our cares upon the Lord because he cares for us. Then we can take the handle of faith and open every door and every tomorrow with hope in God's presence. I 
heard the bells on Christmas Day Their old familiar carols play And wild and sweet the words repeat Of peace on earth
an anxiety that has me doing life in hyperspeed. If I could make a list or add one more project, I wouldn't have to slow down and truly face my fears. Fears of unmet expectations, fears of uncertain futures, and fear of my own human frailty. I was on an anxiety treadmill and my breathing was labored, short, and too fast. That Psalm 46 wisdom of be still was lost on me. I was anything but still. But as I started to work on my fears and manage my anxiety, I've become so aware of my own breathing. We all know that breathing techniques can help us with stress, focus our energies, and promote better health. But in the midst of our fear, how many of us really feel comforted by that just take a deep breath advice from a well-meaning friend or family? But think about it. Really think about it. God breathes into our lungs. It is actually his breath in our bodies. It is a miracle that we can breathe. Why not channel that power to let him calm our internal storms? And if you're comfortable, I would like us to take a few moments to breathe together. Close your eyes. Feel the pew under you supporting you. And let's start by breathing in our nose for three, two, one. And breathe out your mouth. Three, two, one. Let's do that again. Breathe in through your nose. Three, two, one. And out through your mouth. Three, two, one. Keep breathing this way. And as you breathe, I offer up these prayers. May we breathe in the healing power of God and breathe out the pain, sadness, and fear of this world. May we breathe in the grace of God and breathe out regret, shame, and self-doubt. May we breathe in the love of Jesus and breathe out division, anger, and anxiety. You can slowly open your eyes. Remember it that the power of God is as close as your own lungs. Breathe deeply and remember that there is no storm that he cannot calm. Let us pray. Loving God, our hearts and minds can often become flooded with fear, worry, and anxiety. These fears can become overwhelming, remaining with us day and night. Recognizing that our fear and anxiety can become crippling and paralyzing, we come before you to lay our fears at your feet. You are a refuge to all who are distressed. In the troubles of this life, we may find a calm comfort in your loving kindness and tender mercy. Choose to hold firmly to your promises. We pray that you would see us safely through the other side of life's storm. Wrap us up, wrap your arms around us, and remind us that you are here and that you love us. Amen. And now, as the music plays, let us enter into a time of quiet reflection.
invite you to hear these words of the psalmist. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult. There is a river whose streams make glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in an uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. On April 3rd, 1974, a Category F5 tornado ripped a 32-mile-long path through northern Kentucky, taking the city of Brandenburg by surprise. At the time, Brandenburg had a population of around 1,700, and 31 of those individuals were killed by the tornado. I was in the eighth grade at the time, and a few weeks after the storm, my family drove about one and a half hours to see the devastating aftermath of this horrific storm. All that was left were the foundations of homes and businesses. It was a sight that has stayed with me ever since. If you have seen the images coming out of Mayfield, Kentucky this week, you have some idea of what I'm talking about. We know about storms, be they blizzards, thunderstorms, hurricanes, nor'easters, fire, hail, dust, tornadoes. But these are not the only storms we experience in life. We've already heard about the storm of fear and the storm of anxiety, but we know that there are others. Sickness, depression, grief, and others can be added to the list. And sometimes it can be more difficult to recover from these personal storms than it is from something like a tornado. But whatever the storm, our source of comfort remains steadfast and true. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. These words teach us that God does not prevent these troublesome storms from coming into our lives, but that God is a present, well-proven help during these difficult and challenging times. God is in the midst of the city. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. We know what it means when our lives are in an uproar, when chaos seems to reign supreme. But we may not consider that God is right there in the midst of it all. Be still and know that I am God. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Be still. Know God. But being still in a storm doesn't seem possible. And so we recall the words of Jesus among a group of fearful disciples in a storm-tossed boat on the Sea of Galilee. 
peace. Be still, he said. And I wonder, was he only speaking to the storm? Or was he also speaking to the disciples? Life can be difficult. In our lives and in the lives of others, we experience sorrow, pain, fear, a desperation to be loved, doubt, addictions, anxiety, and brokenness in all its forms. Tonight, as we have worshiped together, we have gathered to recognize that life storms do not take a break for Christmas. We come to this sanctuary because we need a safe place to simply be still, be quiet, to breathe deeply, and to be who we are, as we are, in the presence of God. We need hope. And we need to share our hope with others. In life's most, most difficult times, we can take comfort in our faith that our God is greater than any storm we might face. We turn once more to music. Our final song tonight is an expression of our need to reach out and take hold of God's promise to be there with us in the midst of life's storms. Simply allow the words and the music to wash over you and encourage you. Praise Him in the storm. There are a lot of hurting people in the world. And too many of them are suffering alone. At this time, in word and deed, let those around you know that God is with them. Christ is with them. You are with them. And that we go through our trials and tribulations together. And that we are never alone. Perhaps this remaining time of Advent before Christmas gives all of us an opportunity to reach out in love and kindness to those around us, a warm embrace when greeting them, perhaps a card in the mail or a phone call or a visit, maybe a gift, but something to remind one another that in spite of the trials and tribulations, the struggles and uncertainty of living in a broken world. The spirit cannot be broken in the body of Christ as God's love throws through his people. So may we all know that blessing, even when Christmas is blue. And so now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you. And remember that wherever you are, wherever you go, your God is going with you. Peace to everyone. Amen.